Hey everybody, Marty E here. I'm coming to you at the beginning of this video to tell you it went a little longer than I really planned on it being. Uh, I like to try to keep my reviews quick and short and to the point, but this engine had a lot of features to cover and a lot of information and uh, some runtime. So if you're not interested in watching the whole review, there'll be chapters in the bar down here. So you can just uh, click through the chapters. So enjoy the video and thank you for checking it out. Welcome everybody, Marty E here. Hope you had a great uh, holiday uh, season. Back into the grind here in the first week of January. And that can only mean one thing. Well, actually it could mean a lot of things, but for this week, it means I'm gonna take a look at the new Vision Line North Polk and Western Class A locomotive. I got uh, number 1210, which is the World War II version of this locomotive. So sit back, relax, and let's take a look at this locomotive together. Not necessarily a review, but it is. And I just wanna show you the features, show you some of the details, and show you some of the neat effects on this new locomotive. So stay tuned. Now one thing I'd like to emphasize, and one of the most important things that you're going to find in this box, besides your locomotive, which I already unboxed, is this, the owner's manual. We tend to look over this, put it to the side, get the locomotive out and start trying to play with it and run it, and uh, often we breeze over some details that the manual has. So I would suggest, once you get your locomotive out, put it on the track. Don't power it up, maybe prime the smoke units, go through the manual, find out where you put the fluid for the smoke units, and then just go through the manual page by page. You won't pick up everything in the manual that you might need, but it'll give you an idea of all the switches, the, uh, the buttons to push on the cab to, what does what. Um, again, yeah, you, you're not going to pick up everything on the first, first round going through the manual. But it's definitely worth a look at so that you can at least have an idea where something might be in the manual. You might come across something and go, hey, I, I remember seeing that in the manual. I'm going to look it up. So again, we tend to throw these to the side. I, I encourage you, especially with these higher end locomotives, to take a look through the manual. Find out where all the switches and all the buttons and all the features and, and everything you can do with the locomotive and at least give you an idea. Uh, where to look in the manual at a later date if you need to. So let's, uh, let's go over some of the features of this locomotive. So I'm going to get my cheat sheets out here. This locomotive is the Vision Line North Folk and Western Class A. This is number 1210, the World War II version. This is product number 2231490. And again, this is the World War II version. A lot of the features, all new tolling from this locomotive. Four digit addressing. Now, this is not available with your cab two. This will happen when the base three uh, and app three come out uh, at a later date. We're still not sure when that's gonna happen. Stereo sound, speakers in the, in the locomotive, speakers in the tender, awesome. Of course, it comes with the IR transmitter, so when it rolls over a sensor track, it'll load all your information into your cab too, or you'll have to enter it manually if you do not have a sensor track. Great videos online on that. I'll try to put a link in the description. Bicolor class lights, which we'll take a look at. Doghouse 
has a light in it. And the light shuts off from your cab too. I think this is the first locomotive that I got that actually does that. Force coupler. What's the force coupler? Force coupler is a functionality of the locomotive. It senses how much load it's pulling. More cars, heavier chuff. If, it can, if it's going downhill, it senses that. The chuff release lets up so you don't have a, as heavy chuff. When it's going up a hill or up a, up a grade, it senses that there's a heavier load on the locomotive and you'll get a deeper chuff. And the smoke effects will increase. So this unit, this unit has three places for smoke. Stack smoke, pop-off valves. These two smoke units are all, con all filled from the stack. It also has a whistle steam. The whistle steam is filled with at the hole underneath the decorative whistle. Now I recommend that you get a little funnel and I have one and I'll show that when we go ahead and put some smoke fluid in it. Road specific crew talk and tower comm for each of the Vision Line locomotives. This is something Leg uh, Lionel used to do in all their legacy engines. Now they've kind of delegated it just to Vision Line. Um, unfortunately, I'm a fan of having it in all locomotives. I'm sure there's a, uh, I hate to say cost, but I'm sure there is a cost functionality of that, not putting them in all locomotives, but they are in the Vision Line locomotive. So it will call out its road number and so will the, the tower. So that's probably, oh, okay. It also has the five whistles, the five bells. We'll go through the five whistles. I'm not going through the five bells. It's just a pitch change. Um, and we'll try to point out all the features that we have, but there's so many reviews online right now of this locomotive. I'll probably miss some and you can check out the other reviews or you might find something here that I caught and maybe they didn't. So without further uh, boring talk from me, let's take a close up look at some of these features. Okay, so one of the features I really like is as this locomotive turns on, the lights ramp up and you'll hear the locomotive starting up. It's pretty cool. And they've added some sounds from that's uh, more like cab chatter that actually has some realistic, in my opinion, uh, some chatter as it starts up. So let's start her up. Terminal Brakeman NW1210. We have good initial terminal brake test on timetable train number one. Over. That's a Roger. 1210 has good initial terminal brake test on timetable train number one. Out. Okay, um, I'm going to stop the smoke units and the sound so you can hear me, but I wanted to point out the dual color LED class lights. So I've selected white, and if on your cab two, if you select the marker lights, push it once, they'll go green, push it again, they go white. Turn it off, and you can turn them on. So again, it's a double push on the marker light or the class light on button that gets them to change colors. Of course, you can turn off the headlight and all the lights and turn them back on. So that's a functionality that Lino has added recently and uh, it seems to be well accepted. So let's take a look at the physical details and uh, Go through them one by one, and I'll, th I'll show you where some of the uh, switches are. Okay, once again, I want to point out, there's your stack smoke. There's your pop-off valves, and you, I don't know if you can see in the video, but there are a couple small holes at the base of the uh, pop-off valves here and there. This unit and the stack are filled through the stack and then again 
the whistle is filled through the small hole underneath the decorative whistle. Underneath this hatch, which are magnetic, is your Bluetooth on-off switches and your program run switch. And under this hatch is the three smoke unit switches. So you have your main stack, your whistle steam, and your pop-off. So let's look at the detailing, great number boards, separately applied details here, and I'm no class A uh, expert, so some of these details could be wrong uh, compared to the prototype, but Lionel did a lot of work to look, to put some of these details on here. 1210, glass. In the, uh, in the cab, a lighted cab, and we'll take a look at the back head here in a few minutes. You got your uh, plate for getting across to the tender, and then we got the tender. There's the doghouse. There's a, there's a uh, person in the doghouse. These hatches do open. There's really nothing in them, but uh, they added that on there. Real cool load. There's a couple I'm gonna try to get in here, and you can see that there's two slots in the drawbar of the wireless tether, so you can actually tighten this gap. I'm not gonna keep mine too tight because I'm only running 020, 072 curves. So uh, I'm gonna keep it spaced for now. Hatches it open. Got the uh, dynamo, got a decorative bell. Neither one of those function, but that's all right. This has the blackened rods. The detail on on that is pretty exceptional. I kind of really like that. So this is a 2664 locomotive. These are Commonwealth trucks. And it does have an electrocoupler on the rear. And we'll take a look at the uh, rear detail, detail here just in a second. Now, I didn't separate the, lo the locomotive from the tender, but here is the uh, back head. See the painted gauges, you see the flickering firebox. Looks like there's a uh, detailed molded in for this uh, coal stoker. And a couple cab figures. So overall, Lionel did a very good job detailing this locomotive. Take a look at the guy in the tender, dog has. Very cool. The Vision Line Northfolk and Western Class A 1210 is stated to measure in at 30 and a half inches from scale coupler to rear coupler on the tender. And it looks like it measures up. Okay, everybody, let's get this uh, engine rolling. Again, this is the North Folk and Western Class A 1210 2664 steam locomotive vision line. For this uh, video run, I've coupled it with my TMCC aux tender and a set of MTH passenger cars. So let's start her up and move her out from the get-go. Train operating my NW1210, reach 
showing 90 pounds on the rear of the train. Take out 20 for initial terminal brake test. That's a roger. 20 pound reduction given. Checking for leakage, over. Roger, showing 20 pounds. Walk to the train. Brake right out. NW-1210 to Roanoke, ready to make our pull. Can we get permission to occupy the main? Over. Please hold at your location. Roanoke out. Engine 1210 to Roanoke, ready to roll. Can I pull? Over. You can take the green. Roanoke out. some of the smoke features I'm going to turn down the uh, sounds so you got stack smoke got pop-off valve smoke which just finished off and that comes on uh, randomly and will shut off once the locomotive starts moving and you got whistle steam while we're talking about whistle steam let's uh, look at the different whistles so that's the uh, default Another one I like. It's the third selection. There's the fourth. And finally the fifth. And back to the default. And you can also activate the pop-off by pushing OX3. So you can see that running. And again, when you go to fill up your whistle steam, I recommend getting a little funnel like this. It fits down in the hole, keeps the mess from going all over the place, and of course you could use it in your main stack. But uh, very handy to have. Lionel provided these with a certain locomotives. I'm not sure why they didn't do it on this one, but it'll definitely keep your uh, engine looking better. Or you can use a needle uh, smoke fluid uh, smoke fluid uh, system. So uh, there we go.
Let's bring up that volume again. Let's pull them on. I hope you enjoyed this look at the Line L Vision Line, North Folk and Western Class A, number 1210, World War II version locomotive. Overall, I would say Line L has hit a home run with this locomotive. From the detailing, to the paint, to the sounds, to the smokes, to the features, it has it all, and I'm excited to run this locomotive. Some of the quick features that are on this locomotive that we don't find on regular legacy locomotives. Crew talk and tower comm specific call outs on this locomotive and any of the Vision Line locomotives. This one has four digit addressing, which will not be available until we get the Base 3 Cab 3 app, hopefully later on this year. And of course, it comes with all the great legacy features, uh, the newly released bicolor LEDs on the class lights. It has the smoke, great smoke effects stack, pop-off, and whistle. It has a great tender, real coal load, doghouse light, and it has the force coupler. Again, the force coupler basically is taking into account the load that is put on the locomotive either through grades or through uh, what it's hauling. So another great feature that's primarily found on Vision Line locomotives. I'm going to put some pictures at the end of this video to do some close-up looks at the detailing on this locomotive that the video might have not captured. So with that, if you like the video, Hey, give me a thumbs up. If you did like the video, I really don't want a thumbs down, but if you have to do it, you got to do it. But all I ask is please put in the comments what you like to see me do. What would you like to change? What do you think I can do to improve the channel? Because I'm always looking to improve the channel. And if you're not a subscriber, I really appreciate it if you would uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, the more, more I see of an interest, the more videos I'll do, and uh, hopefully we can uh, get a little bit of a community going here. I love doing the videos. I want to keep them interesting, and I want to provide content that you find useful. So with that, we'll fade off into the pictures, and I hope you have a great day, and we'll see you next time here from Marty E. Kodiak Junction, home of the Southern 2356.